There is the man that walked not in the council of the heathen, not seated in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in this Lord, I see, I did it sunrise and sundown. He may go dear like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring it fat fruit in his season. Him live never a go wither, and whatsoever him dwell shall prosper. Yeah! The heathen them now there so them dear like a chaff which the wind drive it away. Therefore the heathen them never go turn upon judgment. Now the sin among them in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord God Jah loved the way of the righteous and the way of the sin among them. Always and always I go perish. Let the people of the most I just say, Jah! Kurkutu bani banyina ne monje ka banka nyina bombora ka haru doru ka haru yokol gong ka haru master ka haru yokol gong ka yama yama ye ka yama zongo lovna ka yama yama ye ka yama zongo lovna the name black rasta and this is the black pot aka kuku shonamo where we speak truth to power now in every traditional african home there is a black pot and every time it rests on the fire we know there is something samshaw's cooking now what is samshaw's cooking today very delicious. I pray for the power of the Almighty Father. Support me with your prayer too, so that we'll be able to cross the Red Sea after we draw out the rod of Moses. Oh, God have mercy. This is the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushunemo, where we speak truth to power. Remember, we don't like to criticize, but if we must criticize, we would criticize only to build and not to destroy. Hey, we are in the service of God and country. Yes. We only come here to build and not to destroy. Yes, we want to see our country, our continent, our land, our people develop. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunamo, and my name, Black Rasta. Now, the first thing I want to look at today is something that I normally don't talk about. Have you heard that Sule Mutari has been sued? Now, Sule Mutari rose all the way to the top. Of Ghana football. We all remember Sule Mutari playing for AC Milan and some other such countries. But remember, he would most be remembered for playing for the Black Stars. We remember his bullet shots and we remember his interviews. We also remember his fashion taste. My brother, my sister, that is the guy married to Menaya, the beauty queen. Hey, Sule Muntari has been sued. He's supposed to be paying some 100,000 American dollars, specifically 97,000 euros. Lord God have mercy. Now, brother, my sister, look at the headline, and you will see that there's something happening. Somebody will say there's something in the soup. Businessman sues Sule Muntari demands payment of 97,000 euros. My brother, my sister. Now, how come? Now, when you read the story, you realize that the businessman is talking about flight, accommodation, and feeding from 2015 all the way to 2017. What it means is that Sule Muntari has been flying regularly. And this businessman who is Italian is the one responsible for his bookings. So anytime he flies around the world with his friends and, of course, other advocates, he deals with the hotel charges, the feeding, and, of course, some other such charges. And in just two years, Sule Mutari allegedly owes him 97,000 euros. My brother, my sister, now Sule Mutari 
How often did he travel between 2015 and 2017? Now, Suleiman Tari, does he have the money to pay? Or does he not have it? Now, we're going to get deeper into it. Hear me now. Now, my brother, my sister, Suleiman Tari played very good soccer and in some of the top teams of the world. Suleiman Tari made a lot of money. Now he's playing for a local team right here in Ghana, and that is Accra House of Oak. The last time we read about him, he said they were paying him one Ghana CD. We all know it's a joke, right? But hear me now. Somebody who tasted international football, played for the Black Stars, is now playing for Accra House of Oak must be somebody who is very courageous, especially that Ghanaians think that when you play for the local side, then you are not anything uh, to really write home about. That is good. Sula Mutari owes 97,000 euros, allegedly. What accounted to that? Is it just accommodation, feeding, and hotel bills, or something else was included? Remember I told you a few weeks ago about the lifestyle of Suleiman Tari. Diamond watches, flashy dresses, walking around and wanted to be recognized almost everywhere he went. Remember how we talked about how Ghanaian celebrities rise all the way to grace, then all of a sudden they drop to the grass. What do you call from grace to grass? Remember how so many celebrities in Ghana have died poor, yet in their heydays, it's always the glamour and the glitz, the pomp and the pageantry. Is Sule Muntari beginning to taste this? Now, according to the businessman, his name is Renato Guiano Rodrigo, and he's coming all the way from Italy. He says, I've been doing this for him, and I always believed that he would pay. He was a man of dignity who always spoke well. But he refused to pay. I took him to a court in Italy and I got the judgment against him. Now he is in Ghana and I have to chase him all the way to Ghana to get my much deserved money. Sule Muntari hasn't uttered a word. Is Sule Muntari broke? I will not be surprised if Sule Muntari is broke because most of our celebrities. Do not think about the future when they make their money. We can mention them in their droves. A lot of them tested serious international football, and they died really poor. Some are even sick. The rest are moving from one radio station to the other, begging their fans to give them money so they could treat one ailment or the other. Is Sule Muntari going to be caught in this kind of web? What lessons are we learning from this? Does he have 97,000 euros to pay? My brother, my sister, your guess is as good as mine. And we wish and pray that the guilty one suffers and the one who is supposed to have the judgment be given the judgment in the interim. We wish Sule Mutari all the best and we hope that he will continue to play football. And I would love to see him at the World Cup, we miss his bullet shots, and I pray that they are able to settle this matter amicably, or else we are in for trouble. We all remember how Sule Muntari allegedly slapped some people at the last World Cup we went to, all because of money. Is Sule Muntari overly zealous about money? What does he really need the money for? Is it to satisfy the high taste of his partner or friends? What really is the problem? My brother, my sister, remember the story of Odate Lamte. Today, Odate Lamte is a shepherd taking care of goats and sheep and cows. Yes, on the way to Tema and beyond. Odate Lamte cannot be considered a rich man at least not as rich as he was in the days. But this is a man who has even been careful with his finances, even though he fell on bad days with his marriage. How many more of our players and celebrities are really thinking about the future? A lot of the celebrities make money, 
They flaunt it on social media. And then in no time, we don't find them. Next time we hear from them, they are on radio or TV asking for some money for some surgery or the others. We shall not go too deep into that. Sule Mutari, wish you all the best. We miss your bullet shots, and we want to see that pretty soon. Dash it away, and let me deal with the next thing. Now, my brother, my sister, the next thing I want to deal with is very thorny and very interesting. Oh, my God. Hear me now. A man has come out to speak, and who is this man? He is the president of Guta. President of Guta. They call him Mr. Joseph Obin. Look at him. Very nice man. Looks very intelligent. And this is a man who looks very responsible. My God have mercy. Now Mr. Joseph Obin is the president of Guta. What is Guta? Ghana Union of Traders Association. Whatever. My brother, my sister, the most important thing is that it has to do with traders and it has to do with Ghana. That's all I'm interested in. So the union of traders in Ghana is headed by this man and his name is Mr. Joseph Obeng. He has come out to say something important and he says, Ghanaian thieves, employee thieves are those who are responsible for the collapse of businesses in Ghana. Hallelujah. That is why I have decided to title this one. Oh my God have mercy. Thieving Ghanaian employees. Mm, 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 mm. Resurface. Watch it out, brethren. Now, let's put Joseph Obing aside and look at Magdan. You remember Magdan, and I've said it umpteen times. Magdan, look at him. He is the shipping guy. Recently, he was in the airport business and blah, 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 blah. Hula Balu. Listen, now Magdan has vowed that he will not employ Ghanaians in any of his businesses because Ghanaians are not honest. He prefers going to India or Sri Lanka or Pakistan or Afghanistan or Kyrgyzstan or Tajikistan. All oh, the stand, 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 stand. He prefers to go get them to come and work for him rather than Ghanaians. This is not the first time we are hearing about a man who does not want to employ Ghanaians. Hey, you all remember G-Man, that dancer, Michael Jackson look-alike, the man who used to do the moonwalk. Come on now, the sun is shining on. Got around, let's do it once again. Oh gosh. We all remember that. This is highlight. Calypso dance, sunshine music. Oh gosh. It's taking me back into the days. This man used to perform like Michael Jackson. And those who couldn't afford the original went for the photocopy. Hey, when Michael Jackson was Michael Jackson, and people wanted him to play when they couldn't afford him. This was the man they went for. Remember his album known as High Life in G Major? Unfortunately, he fell on bad days. And he and Jagapi Opilipi were caught in the web of uh, murder. They went to jail for life by some dint of spiritual prowess and intervention. Jagapi was released, and then for good behavior, ah, G-Man was also released. And look at the new picture of G-Man. You would see him, yes, wearing his collar. He is a pastor now. When he was in jail, he was preaching the Bible and was singing the gospel and doing so many wonderful things. But this time around, no moonwalk. Jesus. Hear me now. Now, G-Man also was sentenced for life, but he came out of it. Yes, and he found himself in Holland. Then he went to another country and to another country where he's doing his Christian ministry. G-Man said only last week that he would never, ever do any business in Ghana because he doesn't trust any Ghanaian. Jesus, why? My brother, my sister, 
Why is it that some of our great businessmen are all running away from Ghana? Hey, listen, lawyer Lita. Do you remember lawyer Tony Lita, right? Great lawyer in Ghana. Ah, yeah, he has this health facility where only Filipinos are working. Ghanaians out because he claims loyalty has been thrown out of the window when it comes to Ghanaians. You see, so we have built a strong dozier so we'll be able to attack this issue. Thief Ghanaian employees reach surface. Now, having looked at all these Ghanaians who don't want to employ fellow Ghanaians, let's look at uh, Joseph Obing, the president of Guta. And what did he say? He says, the collapse of businesses in Ghana is all because of employees stealing. Watch it. Ghanaian businesses collapsing because workers are stealing. Hey, is that not true? Look, listen. The ordinary Ghanaian is suffering from a disease called kleptomania. The ordinary Ghanaian worker, employee, is a kleptomaniac. Hey, the more we steal, the more others clap for us and say we are smart. In Ghana, the new name for thievery and stealing is what? Business. What are you doing? Oh, I'm doing business. What work do you do? Business. I'm a businessman. True or false? Now, everywhere you go, brethren, every Ghanaian is doing business. They will never be able to tell you, this is exactly what business I'm doing. They are stealing. How many Ghanaians walk around with their CV after university? Remember the system even trains people to just read book and not to put brains into their heads. Should I break it down? Should I break it down? Hey, you go to school and they say you are studying science. All the science you know is theory. Yes, Na2 plus SO4 is equal to Q, R, B, C, D, E, F. And then when you add chlorine to this and some gas will come out, pop. And with the pop sound, it goes into the atmosphere and there's some kind of volcanic eruption which will erode the atmosphere and cause a certain... Then you pass your exam. Right? No brains. They don't even know what a volcano is. They don't even know the gas they are talking about. So the practical knowledge is zero. Hear me now, brethren. Now, recently, National Science and Mass Quiz, the quiz master told everybody that the Ghanaian school system is only training them to be theoretical and not practical. Right? So when we go to university, we are only trained to read and write theory. We are not taught to use our brains. We are not taught to communicate in the best way we can when it comes to our professions. All we have to show is a certificate. Not everybody with a certificate is brainy enough on the ground. We have people who have come out with PhDs in engineering. They cannot even screw on an electric bulb. We have people who have degrees in chemistry who are selling postage stamps at the Ghana post office. Hey, my brother and sister, we have an agri minister who does not know the difference between a shrub and a herb. Hey, we have medical doctors in this country, my brother and my sister, who cannot even dip differentiate between the symptoms of typhoid and malaria. True or false? My brother, my sister, we are killing ourselves. Yet after struggling to get employment which is not readily available, we steal from the employer. We steal. It's like sitting on a branch and cutting the same branch down. The Ghanaian is so good when it comes to stealing. The Ghanaian is so terrible when it comes to loyalty and honesty. I'm talking about Ghana. I don't know about Benin. I don't know about Cameroon. I haven't been to those countries. I have not lived there. I'm talking about the country I've lived in. It could be worse in some other countries. But what I know is what I'm talking about. 
Hear me now, Bertrand. Now listen. The Ghanaian employee is so terrible that he is supported by some of our traditional proverbs. In other words, the work of the government, you don't carry the load on your head, you drag it on the ground. Listen to this. In other words, when you are working for the government, you hear some people even mention the other proverb, is it your father's work? How can you give your loyalty when you believe that it's not your father's work and for that matter, you must just drag it on the floor? When it's your father's work, you carry it on your head. You are an idiot. It's so sad, brethren. I see people who struggle to get a job and after they get it, they collapse the job by their TV, and the next day they are on the streets again, holding the same CV, running around and asking people if they can get a job. They speak the best English language, yet they are the most terrible human beings on earth. Ghana, change your attitude. As I told you the other day, my sister decided to open up a restaurant. And every day, the few workers she has there, People who used to come to her house and beg her for money. She opened the restaurant and said, well, you guys come and work there. At least put some virtue in your lives. Make money the hard way. You know what they, they, they do? Every day when they are going home, some people will steal tomatoes. Some will steal onions. Some will steal Kobe. Others will steal okra. Some even steal salt. And they take that home. Now they keep buying. When my sister is tired and is not making money, what will she do? She will close down the place. And the same idiotic thieves would go around knocking on people's doors again, asking for jobs. The ordinary Ghanaian is not even looking for a job. He's looking for a handout. You know how many people have approached me? Oh, their sisters are sick. Their wives are sick. Oh, they need some money for this. You want to give them a job. They are not ready for that. They want handouts. How many Ghanaians I have personally taken to a place where they can be employed, be paid decently? They are not interested in it. Oh, I'll call you next week. I'll call you next week. I want to go and think about it. The following week when the call comes, it's not about the job. It's I am hungry. I haven't eaten the whole day. You are a fool. You are an ass. It hurts me when people are that lazy. Yet these are the same idiots who travel abroad and they serve the white man like slaves. Yet in their own country, to build their own country is a problem for them. They live a terrible... Listen, last two years, in fact a couple of years ago, yes, there were some statistics that came out from the UK and Ghanaians were seen to be the most hard-working people in England. You know why? When it comes to our own country, we sabotage it. But when it comes to the white man's country, that slavish mentality, from full respect, we will go all out and let it work. The other reason is that in our own country, the laws are not working. Those who are supposed to make sure that the laws work are fast asleep. How can you vote 90 year old men into power? Some of them are sitting in wheelchairs. They can't even raise their hand and say good morning. They have stroke. 90% of their bodies are already in the grave. Only 10% are being managed by doctors who are injecting them every second. These are the people who are leading you. As I'm speaking, somebody's mind already is that he's talking partisan politics. They don't know we have grown beyond partisanship. We are talking patriotism. The idiot is talking about party politics. Who cares about that? What we care about, brethren, is how the people can be uplifted, body, mind, and soul. You were the first to get your independence, sub southern part of the Sahara. Today, you are one of the least. Your city is the most accursed currency in the whole region. You are not thinking about it because you vote idiots into power. Idiots who will take your money and fly around with prostitutes. 
idiots who run to the IMF and the World Bank, sell their birthright, and continue to put us into slavery. These are the people you respect. How can you sell your birthright to the same people who dehumanize you? Why is it that you have no conscience at all? And any time well-meaning people come out to talk about how people can uh, be uplifted in this country, people would find a way of injecting some political underpinnings, jingoisms, gymnastics into your character. Are you crazy? My brother, my sister, hey, you see the way Nigerians are seen as 419. Any country you go to in the world, and they hear Nigeria, people start holding their pockets because they don't want pickpockets. Do you think I'm happy about it? Anywhere you hear Nigerians, people hold on to their guns. They are ready to fire. My brother, my sister, why should Nigeria be seen as a country that is dishonest? Ghana, you are gradually getting there. Because you continue voting for old, 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 useless, sick leaders. They use your money to fly around, boosting their egos and stupidities when you continue to dwindle in the doldrums. Are you crazy? It hurts me. Sometimes I wish I had that magic rod to just wave it once and cause everywhere to be calm. But no, we have to go through it like other people are going through it. Listen, Guta President, Joseph Obing, what you have said is nothing but the truth. But let us get the originality. Are we producing enough? Can we make it without honesty? When we had our independence, Nkrumah said one thing. It's now time to change our attitudes. Have we changed our attitudes yet? We were clamoring for independence. We know how to demonstrate. We know how to fill the, the streets with noise. But when it comes to working on ourselves, it's a problem. My brother, my sister, Guta president, I admire you. I respect you. What you have said is the truth. But how can we reach there? We can only reach there when we work hard enough to reach there. Moral studies, do you still have that in the schools? What are parents doing to uplift the morality levels of their children? Are we preaching honesty? When the churches have become useless, any fool can be an elder in church. Any asshole can be an elder in church. All he needs is money. When they are asking for donations, he would go out there and give money, even if it's armed robbery money. Atai can be the head of a certain church, an elder, having criminal. When our justice system is turned into an injustice system, where lawyers and magistrates take goats and sheep and free having criminals to continue killing us. Where is that honesty? How can we run away from tag of dishonesty and disloyalty. Until we do that, Filipinos will keep taking our jobs. Sri Lankans will keep taking our jobs. South Africans will keep killing us on the streets of Soweto. They will slaughter us on the streets of Johannesburg. And when we venture to get into Durban, they will bury us alive. My brother, my sister, when I talk about issues like this, I am filled with so much passion and it hurts me so much that we continue to have these loyal people, people who are just ready to steal. You collapse a business, and the next day you are on the streets looking for another job to collapse. Nobody is ready. The other day I walked into a hotel room, and what message did I see on the wall? He said, treat this hotel room like your own house. I said, Jesus, man. This thing is very loaded. Some people won't understand it. How many of us walk into a hotel room and we feel like we are paying for it? So we throw the bed sheet anywhere. We use the toilet and throw things around and just misbehave and go away. Things that we would not do to our own house, we do it there. The mentality, I paid for it, so I have to make it dirty. Oh, the government is taking my tax money. He's giving it to Zoom Lion so that the streets can be what? Cleaned. So... What? I have to make the streets dirty.
If I don't make the street dirty, how would Zoom Lion work? You see the mentality? I'm paying for the streets to be clean. So I must make sure that I make the streets dirty. So that some meaning will be read into my tax money. Hallelujah. What a mentality. I can't think far. I can't think far. Remember, a country that has no loyalty is a thieving country and a useless country that is not worth dying for. I have a quote for you which will go exactly with this. Boy, skip a A Kuku show them off. I remember we are live on Pan African TV, also live on Ghana Web TV, live on Loud Silence TV, and live on Black Empire Media YouTube page. Remember to subscribe to our page. Remember it's Black Empire Media, and Black is spelled B L A K K. And every day from Monday to Friday, from 4 p.m. till 5 p.m. Ghana time, we are live. Remember. We are in the service of God and country. This is a show of patriotism. It's a show of love. This is the Black Port, a.k.a. Kuku Shonomo, where we speak truth to power. The next thing I want to talk about is the cathedral. You remember they were talking about some national cathedral a couple of years ago? The president went all the way to Israel to pray. And tell God, if you make me the president of Ghana, I am going to build you a house. I will call it the National Cathedral. By one reason or the other, he became president. And this is the design of the National Cathedral. First, they didn't have land for this. The land that was available was not available. Did you hear that? The land that was available was not available. It was land that Nkrumah had built the houses of judges, high court judges, supreme court judges, colonial buildings with serious etiquette and heritage. Jesus have mercy. Hear me now. But because they hate Nkrumah and want to wipe out all his legacies, that was the place they decided that they will put this useless national cathedral. So they decided to flatten all the houses there. They brought bulldozers to crash all those buildings. And they relocated the judges to where I don't know. Hear me now, brethren. They brought in a Ghanaian guy based in the UK, an architect and a designer. And he designed that wonderful edifice. The design is beautiful. But how were they going to raise the money to do this? Hear me now. It was supposed to cost 100 million American dollars. Now, Ghanaian started crying. Hear me. When you made that promise to God, we were not there. It is your duty to fulfill your promise to God. They came to us and said we should help so they would build that cathedral. My brother, my sister, we didn't find it funny. So we were not ready to pay that levy to build a cathedral. To make it worse, they came with some cantata reasons, comedy reasons, Mr. Bean Circus reasons. Oh, we are going to plant every tree that is mentioned in the Bible in there. We are also going to cook every food that we find in the Bible in, in there so people can come and eat manna from heaven. In fact, even the Red Sea, the water will be there for people who want to drink. They will go. Some people think it's a joke. Mr. President went all the way to Israel and imported 
a stone. And people are saying, Black Cross is making a joke. Watch it. Please. Israel gives Ghana sacred Jerusalem stone for National Cathedral Foundation. That's the president, bald-headed president with a pot belly and oversized suit holding that stone. The stone was too heavy, he couldn't even hold it standing. You can see. And the Catholic bishop, who doesn't believe in Israel but rather believes in Rome, is looking at the president and saying, Ah, this man, are you serious? Look at the photo. It tells you everything. Mr. President is kissing the stone. Hey! Uh, the moment he built the cathedral, God got very angry with him and said, Hey, do you have brains at all? Mr. President, did I not tell you in the same Bible that I don't live in houses made of brick and mortar? I will show you guys. You know what he did? God decided to strike us like he struck the Egyptians with diseases. What disease did he give to us? He gave us coro. Coronavirus started ransacking us. So the money that they had stolen, left, right, and center, trying to use to build this useless cathedral, they now have to find a way to put it into the what virus agenda. Up till now, Mr. President is unable to build a cathedral. And listen to the arrogant president. Hear what he said. He said, nothing can stop him from building that cathedral. Watch. Nothing will stop me from building National Cathedral for God's glory. Another coronavirus is coming. Hey, God is going to make sure that disease upon disease will be hitting the people of Ghana. And if the president gets more arrogant, he himself will have the ultimate disease from God. So we'll see how this cathedral will be built. Why are you guys not serious? Why are you guys so wicked? Student loans, you are not able to pay. Teachers are suffering. Farmers are suffering. Nurses are suffering. Musicians are suffering. Hey, 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 everybody is suffering. And you want to build a house for God. One of the men that I love is called Palma Buckle. Palma Buckle is a Catholic. Sometimes he sings some Bob Marley songs off the chain. That's him. Handsome man. Always full of smiles. Integrity. But he tainted his integrity with this useless National Cathedral. What did he say? Palma Boko. Say, ignore the hardships in the country and contribute towards the National Cathedral. Oh, why? Oh, why? You know what I would have done? I would have stripped Palma Boko of everything he has and leave him with one trousers and one shirt, no house. When he lives on the street, he should come and say the same thing that he said. Forget the hardship and build the cathedral. Palma Buckle, you eat eight times a day. Palma Buckle, your children are probably in England or America studying. Palma Buckle, I know that some of you don't even marry, but I know others who marry. I don't know your status, but what I know is that you are not suffering like the uh, 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 Labadi kid. You are not suffering like the Choco boy. You are not suffering like us Nima boys. So if you come and tell us this, in fact, we would like to trade positions with you so that you feel what it is to go through hardship. Hey, don't let a rich man ever come and tell you that, oh, forget your hardship, everything will be okay. Okay, come and taste my hardship and repeat the same things. Palma Bokum. We should forget the hardship and build your cathedral, right? Mm. We should build your cathedral. He said what? Poverty can be used as an excuse to shelve national cathedral project. Poverty. Mm. You see that, that mindset? You see the kind of mindset it is? I am so devastated. These are the people of Palma Buckles thinking who hold their money? Do Catholics pay tithes at all? I don't think so. Catholics, do they pay tithes? No. They drink holy water and communion, right? 
I don't know about tithes. But these are the people who would hold their tithe. And they are going to give to the pastor. On the way, they have a call that their mothers are dying in a certain hospital and they need money immediately to buy A, B, C, D. Yet they will take the money still to the pastor and say, Pastor, pray, my mother is sick so that my mother will be well. True? True? Are we making sense? I should forget the hardship. Build the cathedral so people can come there and pray for employment when we could have built factories, right? No. We will collapse the factories, build the cathedral so people can come and pray. Hori Baba, Hori Baba, Hori Baba, Sandarma, Hori Baba, Sandarma, Hori Baba, Hori Baba. So that we will get what? Employment. It's only in Africa that factories are collapsed for churches to be built so that unemployed people will go and pray for employment. It's sad, Palma Boko, with all love and respect, you said this a while ago, but I believe that you have started thinking about it. Please think about it again. I won't use harsh words on you because I know who you are. Construction of Ghana's National Cathedral is a charge by which God? Which one? The God of Israel or the God of the Philistines? God himself is angry with this cathedral. God is angry with this cathedral. What kind of a country is this? There's another mosque at Nima. Huge structure. My brother, the Nima people don't even have one secondary school in there. I've talked about it. Some people have been angry. My brother, let us not go too deep into it. This is the black pot, a.k.a. Kuku Shonomo, where we speak truth to power. Boy, skip a judge. lady wants to walk out in glitz, glamour and style. She wants to turn heads wherever she goes. She wants to pamper people who matter with her beauty. She wants her beauty to open doors long before she even opens her mouth. Chic Luxury Beauty Home perfectly understands this and makes sure this is delivered 100%. At Chic Luxury Beauty Home, we make you glow brightest with splendid professional perm cuts, wigs, braids, lashes, twists and lux, waxing and more. There is a special pergola where you enjoy fresh air while we give you your sexy braids. We also give you a massage you will remember forever. At Chick Luxury Beauty Home, we are professionally unique, so we have our own Chick Beauty products for your personal beauty care. We also offer international standard training in all our services, and our training is designed to suit your busy schedules and convenience. Locate Chick Luxury Beauty Home at Asafwache, Akubwa Link, Adringana Road, in Accra. Call us now for business inquiries on 024-368-3070 or 055-9370-980. At Chick Luxury Beauty Home, we are sleek and chic. Fire that you require to burn your way to total liberation. 
It is time for the Kuchoko Roots Festival 2022, where we take the roots to the roots, where we take the Kuchoko from the ghetto to the grotto. Date is Friday, 15th April 2022. Time is 6 p.m. Until you drop, a rate is only 50 Ghana cities. It is happening live at the Alliance Frances behind the Opebia House, right there at 37. Hear me now. Now playing live is the ever powerful Black Rasta, your Kuchoko legend, and of course, Rex Sobar, Ghana's high life legend, and other fire blazers like Fee Rankin, Black AT, TK, Eddie Wayori, Zendima, and of course, the evergreen Vibration Kings Band. Make a date and don't be late. You must come and witness real. Red Hell on Easter Friday. Come, let us bury Satan with Kuchako, 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 Bam, Kuchako, Kuchako. Mr. President, why you they lie so? Before election, you tell me you be angel. When you sick, you run go to London. When we sick, we die for Kolebo. Mr. President, why you wicked so? Tell me how. Blackboard. 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 This is the Blackboard, a.k.a. Kukushunamo, where we speak truth to power. Now, if you are a young girl, if you are a lady, and you truly want to look slick and chic, you want to bamba with the big boys, now the place is chic, luxury beauty home. What do you want to do? Is it natural twist and locks? Massage, waxing, lashes, personal care, chic products. Oh my God. The place is chic luxury home. Hey, they deal with your nails, perm cards, wigs, and braids. Hey, and they have this special pergola where you can sit and enjoy fresh air. Whereas they give you a drink and even something nice to nibble. Whereas they give you your very beautiful, sexy braids. Chic. Luxury Beauty Home is the place every girl, every lady is going to now. And it's located right there inside a drink or Pick up the numbers, call them right now, and book a place. Do you want to go through some training? One month, two months, three months? They would make some room for you so that you would also come out as an international beautician. Yes, and they don't train you only here. They also take you out. So you go out there into the, which country do you want to go to? Is it China? Is it America? So you complete your training there, call Chick, and Chick will be ready for you. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushodomo, where we speak truth to power. But remember, there's another interesting thing happening, and it's going to be happening tomorrow, Friday, the 15th day of April, and that is Good Friday. I, me, myself, will be performing Alongside Rex Omar, right there inside Alliance Francais. And it's going to be great. Live band music. I'm going to be doing 20 songs. Great and wicked. Rex Omar is going to be performing. It's 50 Ghana cities. Make sure that you are at the Alliance Francais. 6 p.m. sharp. We start and we go all the way long after midnight. My brother, my sister. This is the Blackport. And we want to thank Chick Luxury Beauty Home and, of course, Tina Ted Natural Health Center for supporting us. Thank you so much. We appreciate your support. And we are waiting for yours as well so we can kick this patriotic show. Yes, this show of loyalty to the ultimate. My name, Black Rasta, and this is the Blackport. Now, the next thing I want to look at is very simple. It says, the city backs the U.S. dollar. Now, the Ghanaian currency is known as the CD, right? It's begging the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar is a king when it comes to the Ghanaian CD. Even when we read our budget statement, it's all about the dollar. Everybody's talking about the dollar, and the dollar is rising. Kobe sellers, tomato sellers, plantain, everybody's talking about the dollar. Now, my brother, my sister, I want to take you to a man we have spoken about already, and he's Joseph Obing. Joseph Obing is the president of Guta. That's him. We've spoken about him. He went to Opokuwari School in Kumasi. 
He's been awarded around the world. This man seems to be brilliant. Listen to what he said. He said foreigners, foreign businesses are taking over our country and putting pressure on the Ghana city and making the Ghana city useless as against the dollar. Watch it. Foreigners taking advantage of Ghana's weak institutions. Give me another headline from this same man talking about the fact that the Ghana city is almost useless when it comes to the dollar. My brother, my sister, and what this guy is saying is nothing but the truth. Watch it, brethren. Now, hey, you know Bloomberg. Bloomberg, just last year, came out praising Ghana. Oh, how Ghana was good, and how Coco was flying, and how Ghana was making money, and uh, things. I mean, I mean, Bloomberg said a lot of nonsense about Ghana. Bloomberg said in a decade, or more than a decade, Ghana had never actually ripped from East Coco. Then last year, as it was about to harvest, listen up. The harvesting had not been done, but Bloomberg had already projected that it was going to be a bumper harvest. Did we have the bumper harvest? Our cocoa board has slumped to the lowest level. Fertilizers are no more flying. Our cocoa lands have been sold to Chinese to use for illegal mining. What did Bloomberg see to have come out to say that we're going to have a bumper harvest? Was Bloomberg bribed? What happened? Now listen, interestingly, in March, which month is this April? Only last month. Look at what happened. The inflation of Ghana galloped. Dim, 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 dim. What was the inflation rate, my brother, my sister? 19.4%. You know what that means? Almost 20%. So if you go to the market to buy something that costs 10 Ghana, now there's an inflation of 20%. How much are you going to buy that thing now? 12 cities. Two cities will be added. The same thing. Look at it. The same Bloomberg. Now came out and watch. Ghana inflation rate at highest since 2009. 2009. This is 2022. And Ghana has the highest inflation. Our currency is the worst in the whole of the region and beyond. Watch it. Bloomberg says consumer prices rose 19.4% in March. Median estimate of 16.5. That's the average. And watch. Inflation breached central bank target brand for seventh month. Inflation. Food prices are rising. Some biscuit that I used to buy at 12 Ghana. I went into the, the shop only yesterday. They said it's now 22 cities. Oil prices are increasing. They will blame it on, on what COVID and also blame it on Ukraine-Russian war. The ostrich always has a reason to be stupid. True. Samson would always give a reason to be stupid. Bloomberg. That touted the prowess of this country's economy. Only last year. Is already whipping this country like a common thief. Barabbas. Pshap, pshap, pshap. My brother, my sister, look how this country is struggling. Inflation gone all the way to almost just last month, 20%. What is happening? And Guta president says is the foreign companies that have come to take over our economy. That is why the dollar is always riding over us. Look at it. Foreign dominance of our economy cause of rise in dollar. And that's true. It is true. It might not be the only reason, but it is true. Your thievery, your laziness would also be attributed to this. You are thieves. They employ you, you want to steal. A media house employs you. Tomorrow, you are stealing the lens of a camera. The next day, you are stealing uh, 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 lapels. Eh? A fitting shop. Mechanic shop. Eh? 
and price you. Tomorrow, you are stealing spanner. The next day, screwdriver. Who do you want to screw? What kind of attitude is this? Thieves all over the place. Huh? It looks like the armed robbers are now competing with the government. Still, night and day. What the heck is happening to us? Everywhere you pass, foreigners, Canada, Japan, the other day mentioned it. That on the spin text road is only Syrians and Lebanese who have taken over the whole place. There are some areas you go to in Ghana, and all you hear is Arabic. And you know that this area has been taken over by some other places you go to, all you hear is Xin Huang, 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 Huang. Everyone is Xin Huang, Huang, Huang. And you know where they are coming from. I have no problem. My problem is that these are the guys who take the best places and relegate our brethren who are thieves and lazy to the slums. Is somebody understanding what I'm saying? Is somebody understanding? If Magdan is not employing your lazy self, if Magdan is not employing your disloyal self, and he goes to bring Filipinos, Chinese, and uh, people from Sri Lanka, the money would go to them. They would own better places, and you continue to be in your shack. Who doesn't understand? Who doesn't understand? That is the point, brethren. Hey! The people who control your money control your life. And it's foreigners who control it. They don't want your Ghana city. They keep the dollar. I used to have a friend. In fact, a group of friends in one embassy whose name I wouldn't mention. Anytime they went out to spend money, Ghana money, they didn't take change. You know why? Two reasons. One, the money, the what currency was dirty. They said it was smelling. It's true. How do you keep your currency? In America, they keep it in a wallet. Here, hey, Shushan boys, hey, Fitin boys, Fitas, everybody is just, sometimes they even squeeze the money like this. Especially when you go to Aure and people are dancing, go, 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 they fold the money and throw it at people. You are destroying the currency. You understand that? To print the currency is expensive. Look at it. Ghanaian traders threaten attack on Nigerian counterparts. Seek closure of their shops. Jesus, watch. You see your shameless self? You are now chasing Nigerians out. That Nigerians are those, hey, Nigerians are smart. You know why? They are business minded, especially the Igbo boys. Hey, they chase the Nigerian boys out. And now they couldn't find some of the essential things they wanted. They were now crying that the Nigerians should come back. Eh. You know those who should be chasing, like our stupid South African brethren and sisters misbehaving night and day. They leave the Pakistanis, the Indians, the Russians, the uh, 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 Americans, and they kill their own brothers. That is not to say they should attack other people. What it means is that they are saying, that we are those, fellow Africans, are those that are making them poor and not the Americans and the Russians and the rest. Who controls the economy of South Africa? 90% of the economy is controlled by white people who have nothing to do with South Africans. You have no problem with that. But your brother from Ghana, Zimbabwe, Nigeria, who is coming to find something small to eat, you slaughter him because you say he's taking your food away. Where is the sense? When are we ever going to develop? Ghanaians are also getting into that xenophobia. Nigeria should go. Nigeria, go. Hey, and they are taking our jobs. They are making our... Kill it, man. Now, the last thing I want to look at, and it's going to be very brief. My brother, my sister, is something that is so dear to my heart. And I've titled it Kidney. Mm, 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 mm. It's all about our kidney. Booming kidney business in Ghana. Right now, the other day, two boys came to my house that they wanted to talk to me. And when I looked at them, something told me, oh, these guys are coming to ask for money because the ordinary Ghanaian is so lazy, he doesn't want to work. The average Ghanaian is so teething. Even when he gets the job, he will collapse it with his stealing. And that is sad. They came. 
And when we sat down and I asked them, oh, how is it? Some of them will tell you they are underground musicians and they want you to help them. Okay, sing a few lines of your music. He will start, and you are like, ish. My brother, are you okay? Cool down. You don't want water? Sing, let me hear. The next note he sings is like a shark on heat. What's wrong with you? So every hustler has to be a musician now. And those who can even try a few notes, it's okay, you are good. You know what? I'm going to have a live band rehearsal on Thursday. Come and join me. Come. You won't see them. You help them even produce their music. To promote it is a problem. The art cover, put it on your social media, wherever. You know what they do? Their uncle's funeral. The uncle who died some two years ago and has been in the morgue. And the family is stupidly paying money all these two years, waiting for lost children to come home before they bury the useless uncle who died. His photo is on his WhatsApp DP. You go to his Facebook page, oh, my uncle, why did you go so soon? Meanwhile, you have music to promote, idiot. He will come to you and say, oh, I know Chopo, the, the whole, I know, you, you know what? You know what? You want chop? You forget, say, the Bible say, my way lazy make you no chop. The other way no they work make you no they chop. Anyway, the two guys came. They were not underground musicians. Neither were they uh, whatever. They were asking me if I knew somebody who would buy kidneys. Because they had kidneys, two kidneys each. And then they wanted to spare one. They had heard on radio that a man needs only one kidney. So they want to sell one so they will leave. 18-year-old boys. 18 years. You want to sell your kidney? Eh? I looked at them. I said, listen, you know how old I am? I'm 47. Soon I'm going to be 50. Under no circumstances would I sell my kidney. Even if I was very, very, very poor, I would only donate out of heartache love, but not to sell. But when they left, I looked at the media and checked a few things. There's actually a rise. Rise in kidney diseases in Ghana. Hey, even the bank hospital in Accra. You know the bank hospital, don't you? The bank hospital, my brother, my sister, has organized some seminars. Look at it. That's the bank hospital. Beautiful hospital. They have organized seminars, my brother, my sister where people have come to speak. There's a doctor called Charlotte, Dr. Charlotte, very beautiful woman. That's her. She came out and decried the situation of the kidney. Ghanaian youth are getting it. So look at it, kidney disease among youth on the rise in Ghana. And this is Charlotte. Dr. Charlotte Osafo, hear me. So because of that, instead of thinking about what is causing kidney disease, Boys are rather in a hurry to sell their kidney so that when they finally get the kidney disease, there's only one left. And if that is destroyed, they are looking for another person's kidney that they can't afford. And you know why? Crime rate has even increased. Boys are now moving around with baffle. When they see a young boy, cut and remove your kidney. Murder. In Ghana. In Ghana, brethren, and the presidential advisor on health, Jesus have mercy. Hey, what has he said? That's him. Very nice looking gentleman. I love this man. Oh my God, have mercy. I love him. He's called Dr. Anthony Insia. You know what he said? He said the government is working hard to give dialysis at a cheaper cost. Listen, who? Dialysis, they want to cure, they don't want to prevent. Oh, don't worry, you go catch the kidney disease. Come, we'll give you dialysis at a lower cost. It's like, oh, don't worry, you die. We'll give you a cup coffin at a, a, a cheaper rate. When there should be a strong push to be able to avoid kidney. 
hypertension, diabetes. These are the things that give us. But in Ghana and Africa, other things give us kidney diseases. And some people say it's witches and wizards. When are we going to grow? My brother, my sister, another time, I will go deeper into this. In the interim, my name is Black Rasta. It's been the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunomo, where we speak truth to power. Remember, it is all about the service to God and country. Boy, skip a job. <laughs>